Hey guys, what's going on? Adam here with Indy Farm Life. I have yet another random project for you guys today. Installing a sewer grinder pump for the house that we're building. I don't know if I'll get to the line today or not, but let me at least show you the components of what we're dealing with. So there's the pump itself, tucked away here in the barn. And this is an E1, which I believe is Environment 1. One of the larger manufacturers in this space. But basically, you can see the red line right there. That's the discharge port. And then on the other side, there's a four inch inlet. And everything below that is where the pump sits and everything above it is dry and that's where the electrical connections are. So when this is all said and done, the only thing sticking out of the ground is that green top up there. And this is the route we're going for this house because our sewer run is over 850 feet. And if you've watched any of our videos, you know that all the land that we have is pretty well flat, as you can see right here behind me. So if we were to do a traditional gravity line out to the manhole, which is 850 feet that way, we would run into an issue of not having enough fall to make it out there and if we did get the fall we'd probably be multiple feet below the service line itself so a grinder pump it is and that there is a thousand foot of one and a quarter inch hdpe or high density polyethylene that is the discharge line it's a pretty simple connection compression fitting on the red outlet i showed you in the barn there and then just trench it in and what's really nice about utilizing a setup like this is that when you trench that line in, you don't have to put it on grade. So there's no getting the laser out and shooting grade to make sure you have the right fall. The pump in those things can lift to a head height well over 50 feet. I want to say somewhere I read it was like 184, but don't hold me to that. I'll see if I can't find that actually somewhere and drop it in the comments before I commit to it right here. A much easier line install than a gravity line. Just got to trench it in below frost line, which around here is about three feet. And ultimately the line will come just to the right of that gravel pile, swing through here and run out behind the barn all the way to that manhole. But I probably won't get to that in this video. So up here at the house for the connection, I've got leaves in my basement. You can see the sewer sleeve peeking out right there. So I'll need to excavate down right here. We'll have about a three or four foot run before the pump will be excavated and sit here. Discharge line all the way out. And I will be putting a two way clean out right here for service purposes. Should be a relatively easy install, on paper anyway. We'll see how it goes. So I'm gonna see if I can't wake the 580 up behind me and start excavating this hole. I probably won't shoot live footage throughout this process, but I'll stop and check in and let you know what I did. So if you're trying to understand how to do this yourself, you'll have somewhat of a loose guide. Okay, so step one is to blow a line on your backhoe and wait a week before you can start. As you can see, there's now some house going up here, but Step two is dig a really big hole. I probably over dug in depth, which is fine. I'd rather have more depth than not enough. We'll backfill it with number 53 stone. Punch my sewer hole there so I can see where it exits the house. Around here, code is one eighth of an inch of fall per foot. So I'm looking about four or five foot, so about a half inch of fall or so. I'm gonna level the bottom up and start packing in my gravel base and take some more measurements and see where we're at. So I actually ended up excavating some of the discharge line a little bit more before I started back filling with gravel. I wanted to find that gravity drain line here while I was thinking about it so I didn't break it. It was actually buried at about five foot depth. So the discharge lines only needs 44 inches of cover. So we're good there. But I'm gonna grab the tractor and get a couple buckets of 53, and start leveling up my pad. You need about six to eight inches in your pad I've got room for probably about 10, so should be plenty. And then I'll have to start dialing in my measurements elevation-wise between the inlet on the pump and the discharge from the house. So I put two tractor buckets of 53 down in the hole and then tamped it in. Let me walk down here and show you guys what I did. Everything right now is just dry fit, but I wanted to get an idea of how much height I had and if I was in the ballpark or not, and I actually am. So I dry fit that pipe and then dropped a level on it to see where things stood. And I'm within probably half inch or so of what I ultimately need. My gravel base is about 10 inches deep or so. So I can easily gain that half inch there or add more gravel if needed. One item to look out for after you cut the hole away is make sure you clean out any of the black waterproofing or whatever color your waterproofing might be. Mine's black. Uh, but when I first opened this up, this was completely caked and coated. I cleaned it up pretty good. And I might try to clean it up a little bit better tomorrow. But I just used 
the cleaner you use when you're putting pipe together and some steel wool actually did a nice job cleaning that up there sits the pump about ready to drop it in before too awful long i'm all leveled up and ready to go over there just kind of dry fitting some of my pipes so this is gonna leave the house have my clean out and up and then a short section to run to that white inlet there also, I can't recall if I mentioned it or not, but this thing does have ballast that goes down around the bottom. And so as you can see here, these are precast modular pieces and it makes the total dimensions three foot by three foot instead of the 28 inches in diameter, or whatever the unit is. What's nice about this is that it is modular and I can set the whole basin down in the hole and then put this around it later as opposed to having it cast and having to deal with the extra weight. So since the ballast already is on it, you can just pick it up with a nylon strap around the top of that. But if, but if you had the ballast around the bottom of it already, you would have to pick it up by those wire eyes. That would be if the concrete was set around that and not modular like what I have. So we just got the pump set out here. Chris moved it with his tractor since the forks were on there. And I went ahead and tossed the ballast pieces down in there. That way I'm not trying to struggle to get them around the pump once it's sitting in there. But we're going to put a little sling around the top of that thing and probably swap the forks over to my tractor. Got a little more height and try to get that done in there. If we don't have the height, we'll use the backhoe, but the hydraulics on that tractor of mine are a lot smoother than the backhoe. So I'd rather not damage this. Got her set in the hole and leveled up. I'm gonna start dry fitting my pipes before I glue everything. But if you look closely, you can see that bead in the top of the green cap there. That's supposed to be the burial line. And looking back at the house, we're sitting a little bit high, but we're also at the mercy of the sewer sleeve, unless you want to drill a new one, which I don't want to do. So we'll have to build up dirt on this, which was the plan anyway, given how the ground falls. My only hang up is I wish that they had carried that seven foot wall there instead of dropping it down to a six, it'd be perfect. But We'll figure out the work for the dirt up against the house here. Here's a shot looking through the sewer sleeve. Dead on. Love it. Got everything down here in the pit. That piece of pipe sticking up out of that clean out is actually what goes into the pump itself. A little bit of conflicting information. The instructions say to mark it at three and a half inches, and the plug here says to mark it at three. So. The solid line is three and the dotted is three and a half. And here's the plug comes out. And then what you need to do is uh, lubricate this with pipe lubricant or dish soap. I'm using dish soap because that's what I have. And then insert it to between three and three and a half inches. I'll take that half inch as a gift. Got those two pieces in. And one other thing you need to do before you insert the pipe into the pump is take a file and bevel the end of that pipe. Got that beveled. Now to put some soap on both of these and slide them in there. So I got all my connections made. I still need to glue in my clean out there. And if you look down, you can see the dotted line. I went to the three and a half inch mark and got the ballast around there. Chris helped me put that in place. But just need to start backfilling and then hook my discharge line up. And I'll probably just run it out a few feet for now until I have my inspection. I'm gonna rent a trencher instead of using that backhoe to run the lines like I said it's 800 plus feet way out past the pond but things are moving along and then um, I also need to hook up the electric at some point but we obviously don't have electric hooked up to the house so that'll be for another day as well so backfill to this pipe for inspection purposes leave it open and then on from there got my backfill started sorry I'm not shooting this stuff live it's just easier to pop on after the fact but as you backfill, you need to uh, tamp it in every like six to eight inches. So work my way up slowly. Backfilled up to where I need to for the inspection. Now I'm just gonna hook up my discharge line with a female pipe thread on one side, compression fitting on the other. Should be pretty straightforward. And then just gonna roll out about 10 feet of this or so and be done for the day. And that's where I'll hang this video up too, and I'll show you the trenching portion 
of everything else. And then there is an electrical component, but like I said before, we don't have electricity right now. So not gonna hook that up and I don't have anywhere to mount the panel. So once you pull this red plug, female pipe threads, compression fitting, screws in there. And then this piece just screws off and accepts the male end of the pipe. So I just took the coupler end off. Note that there is an O-ring that's in here that you need to lubricate before you close this up. And then Teflon paste on the pipe threads. And there it is. Got that coupler on there and the pipe is hooked up. Now I just gotta run about 850 foot out that way. Just gonna leave that roll there for now. Come back and do that another day and make this another video, but there you have it. Hooking up a grinder pump is not too difficult. Just gotta pass inspection now and then get electricity to it. And like I said, run that line. We'll be set. I hope that's helpful for some of you guys out there. Not an incredibly difficult project, just takes a little time and you need to have the right tools to get it done. If you would, hit that subscribe button and come back and see us. This is just one of the many random projects going on around the farm. When we started this channel, I promised you random and I think this fits the bill. We'll see you guys next Tuesday at 9. Take care.